In this video, we're going to learn some more derivative rules, namely the constant multiple, sum, and difference rules. We'll start with the constant multiple rule, which talks about when you take a function f of x and you multiply by any constant multiple c, so c is some real number. Okay? Let's say that we have our function f of x and we've multiplied it by any real number c, and we want to take the derivative of that. All we have to do is take the c and move it to the outside, and then take the derivative of f of x. So the constant multiple gets moved to the outside. Let's see a quick example of this. You should know from the power rule that if you have f of x is equal to x to the 3, its derivative, f prime of x, is 3 times x squared. Now let's say I want to take the derivative of another function, Let's call it, what's the ddx of the function 4 times x cubed? Okay, so this is our original power rule, just working on one power of x. And now let's say I've taken that power of x and I've multiplied it by 4. What's the derivative of that? Well, according to the constant multiple rule, I can just take the 4 and put it right out front and then consider what's the ddx of x cubed. And the ddx of x cubed is right there, 3x squared, so the derivative of this is 4 times 3x squared, and then 4 times 3 is 12, so I get the derivative of that is 12x squared. Okay, once you get comfortable with this, you don't actually have to go through each one of these steps. You can just say to yourself, if I have 4x cubed, I'm going to bring the 3 down and multiply it by 4 in order to get the 12, and then I'm going to subtract 1 from the power. It's very useful when we're taking the derivative of polynomials, for instance. Now let's go into the sum and difference rules, and I've written them in combination because they're pretty much the same rule. If you have the sum or difference, so plus or minus, you've got to pick one of those, of two functions, and you want to take the derivative of that, that's going to be the derivative of the first function, and then plus or minus, depending on which one you had, time, and then the derivative of the second function. Okay, so let's see a quick example of that. Let's say that my f of x is equal to x to the 2, and my g of x is equal to x to the 5. Then I know that f prime is equal to 2x, and I know that g prime is equal to 5x4. And what I would want to know is, what's the derivative of x squared plus x5? Now you see on these boards I've actually tried to interchange the two types of notation. Remember that having a ddx in front of something is the same exact thing as having a parenthesis around it and then writing prime. Both of these things mean take the derivative. So we already know these two simple derivatives. What's the derivative of their sum? It's the sum of their derivatives. That's what the, con that's what the sum and difference rule says. So the derivative of those two things is just going to be the sum of the derivatives 2x plus 5x4. And if it was the difference, then it would just be the difference between them. Okay, so now let's take a look at how these constant multiple sum and difference rules work when we're trying to take the derivative of a very long function. It's not so much complicated as it's just going to be a long function. Let's say I give you a big fat polynomial here. So, for example, let's say my f of x is equal to 12x to the 2 plus, or sorry, let's say the function is 3x to the 7 plus 8x to the 4 minus 12x to the 2 plus 7x plus 4. Whew, that's a big one. But what's good about this function is it's just a combination of a bunch of powers of x x to the 7, x to the 4. Do you know what type of function this is? Polynomial. That's right. This is a polynomial function. So it's going to be continuous everywhere. And actually all its derivatives are going to be continuous everywhere. So it's what we call continuous and infinitely differentiable. Anyway, let's just take the derivative. Okay? So if that's my f of x, go ahead and practice the constant multiple, sum, and different rules, and go ahead and get that derivative. Alright, I hope you're taking the time to test yourself, pausing the video and testing yourself. And how we're doing it here is we're just taking all the constant multiples and they just carry right down. Okay? Now when I take the derivative of x to the 7, the 7 would come out in front. But because there's a 3 there, now I have to do 3 times 7. So that's how I get 21 and then 7 minus 1 is 6. 
Alright, now let's do this one. 8 times 4 is 32, so that's 32x to the 3. Got it? Next one is a minus 12. Remember this minus comes into play because we're using the sum and difference rules. So the difference is going to stay a difference. And the next term will be minus 24 because it's 12 times 2 and x to the first power. Now what about when we get here to the 7x? What power is this x to? That's right, it's x to the 1, right? There's a secret x to the 1 here, and the power rule is still in effect. So I just take the 1, carry it down, 7 times 1 is 7, and then I have x to the 0. But the thing is, x to the 0, just like everything else to the 0, is just 1. So I can just write plus 7. Okay, now what happens to the 4? I have actually yet to mention what the derivative of a constant is. This 4 all by itself, if you imagine graphing this 4, would just be a flat line, just right at 4, totally flat line. Now what kind of slope is on a flat line? Zero slope, that's right, a flat horizontal line like that has a slope of zero, so I have a feeling the derivative of this number 4 is going to be equal to just zero. But let's go on the side and just look at that a little closer. Really what a 4 is, is it's 4 times x to the zero. Just like you saw me take this x to the 0 here and turn it into a 1, I can take 4 times the secret 1 and turn it into 4x to the 0. Now if I wanted to do the power rule on it, the 0 would come out in front and multiply 4 times 0. Then I'd have an x to the minus 1 because 0 minus 1 is, one, is minus 1. But that doesn't matter because I've multiplied the whole thing by 0. You see? So the derivative of this function just turns into 0. And that's the same for all constant functions. The derivative of any constant value like this that has no x's attached to it, it just goes to 0 because it's a flat line. So I'm not even going to write that there. That disappears to 0. And this is the answer for the derivative. Okay, let's practice that one more time. And this time I'm going to throw in some fractional and negative powers to help you guys um, keep up to tabs on those. Alright, let's say for example, f of x is 1 half times the square root of x plus 1 over the cube root of x to the fourth. Whew, this is a crazy one. Alright, and actually let me put an 11 up here just so we can use more of our rules. Okay, so I want you to take the derivative of this function and before you start using the rules, I highly recommend that you take these fractional, possibly negative powers and rewrite them, each term, as x to the what. Okay, so to help you out with that, what I'm saying is this is 1 half times x to the plus 11 on the top times x to the fill in the blanks, right? So the square root of x is equal to x to the 1 half. And this one is the cube root of x to the fourth and it's on the bottom, so that means this is to the minus 4 thirds right there. Okay, now this is the form of f of x that I wish to look at before I take the derivative. Now I'll start to use all my rules and take the derivative. Okay, so 1 half times 1 half is 1 quarter, and 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. Here, I'm going to multiply those out, and because there's a negative up here, it's going to cause the coefficient in front now to become negative. So I have negative 44 over 3, and I have x to the minus 4 thirds minus another 1, which is minus 7 over 3. Okay, so hopefully you guys are getting used to this, and let's just do one more for lots of practice. You're going to want to get very comfortable with this as we move along to start to apply the derivative. All right, so let's say maybe I have f of x is equal to 14 minus 1 half x cubed. Okay, go ahead and take the derivative of that. All right, so this is going to use a couple of facts. Um, before we begin, you definitely want to take this and rewrite it. So, oh, uh oh, did anybody do that? Put the 2 on top. I purposefully did this, I put a 2, 1 over 2 times 1 over x to the cubed. When you rewrite this with the x on top, sure, this is going to be x to the minus 3, right? Because it was x to the 3 on the bottom. But what happens to the 2? Does the 2 come up as well? You don't really want to do anything to that 
this right here is a coefficient of one half. You see, this could also be seen as one half times one over x cubed. So what you want to do is you leave the one half alone and then you multiply it by x to the power negative three. Okay, so now once you've got it rewritten like that, now go ahead and take the derivative and this is going to use the rule that we just brought up, which is if you have any constant numbers, like the number 14 has no x's with it, it just goes to zero. The derivative of a constant number goes to zero. And here now we have something tricky. We've got a minus one-half times a minus three, and so two minuses cancel out, so we get a positive three over two, and then minus 3 minus another one, that's minus 4. So all in all, the answer for the derivative is 3 halves x to the minus 4. Okay, I hope you're getting used to this and appreciating what all these rules can do to save you time. At least you're not using the limit definition of the derivative to compute the derivatives, right?